So, Uncle Bob, you have written a number of books, but today we're going to cover mostly from your latest book, which is titled Clean Craftsmanship, The Disciplines, Standards, and Ethics. I think if I'm not mistaken, you have been writing this even long ago, maybe through blog posts and some of the webinars and conferences that you did. But maybe if you can give us some overview of what are the reasons that now actually you wrote this book. Clean Craftsmanship. The book is a culmination of a lot of topics. So I've started writing books in 1995, 1994. I wrote books about software design, object-oriented design. I wrote a book in 2002, which was Agile Software Development Principles, Patterns, and Practices. That really brought all of the design principles and all the practices and design patterns all together in a nice, neat little bow. And then I started writing books like Clean Code. And that was a difficult book for me to decide to write because who am I to tell anybody what Clean Code is? I'm just a programmer. But I figured somebody has to write this book. So I wrote it with the caveat at the beginning that, you know, this is my way. I do it this way. You don't have to do it this way. It's just, you know, after 50 years of programming, maybe you want to listen to what I have to say. As I was writing that book, There were a whole bunch of topics I wanted to talk about, but they didn't fit into that book because Clean Code is a very technical book. And I wanted to talk about all the non-technical things. So I had a whole bunch of topics I wanted to talk about. Once I published Clean Code, I wrote the Clean Coder. It just kind of spilled out, right? All this stuff that was stuck in my brain just kind of spilled out. The Clean Coder is all the non-technical things about being a programmer. Like, what do you do when you go to work? You've just had a big fight with your significant other. You cannot get your brain to focus on code. How do you deal with that? That's the kind of stuff that's in that book. How do you estimate? How do you deal with managers? All that stuff. I wrote that book. And then I started to get this idea that we needed to address Agile. The Agile community had begun in like 1999. And the manifesto was signed in 2001. And then all the consultants jumped in and they kind of corrupted, not the right word, but they got involved and they stretched the whole discipline out. And I thought it's time for a reboot there. So I wrote the Clean Agile book as a way to just reset and describe what Agile was and how we got there and why we got there and where we should go. And as I was writing that book, I thought, well, there's a whole bunch of other things I want to say about this, but they're not really tied to Agile. They're more about the notion of craftsmanship. I put all those topics aside. And then when I was done with Clean Agile, I thought, okay, I've got to write this craftsmanship book. The craftsmanship book was kind of an odd mixture of deeply technical topics, very technical topics, having to do with test-driven development and refactoring. And then also this kind of pullback to say, okay, we need some standards and we need some ethics to try and balance this whole thing out. A programmer is a deeply technical person, but has to be governed by non-technical concepts, including standards and ethics. So that book kind of ties all of those things together into a nice, neat little bow. If you read that book, it starts out really technical. It's probably one of the most technical books I have written. In fact, there was so much technical stuff in it, I had to put some of it on video. So as you're reading the book, it refers you to videos that you can watch. And then as the book progresses, it shifts into standards. What are the standards we try to uphold while we are doing all this deeply technical work? And then once we get through the standards, the book shifts again and says, okay, now what are the ethical situations that drive those standards. So the book proceeds from disciplines, deeply technical disciplines, then to the standards that drive those disciplines, and then to the ethics that drive those standards. And that was the way I completed that book. So if I may add, there's actually one book that you missed, which is Clean Architecture. Uh, Oh yeah, I forgot that one. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So that book is also deeply technical and it talks about clean architecture, like ports adapters and that kind of stuff. So I think that's also worth to mention. So you mentioned about programmer being a technical person. They should have the technical practices. They should have standards and ethics. And if you compare it with other professions, like maybe doctor, pilot, lawyer, and all that, programmers seem do not have those kind of things, which is why I think in the beginning of the chapters of the book, you wrote about this problem. 
developer now is like coming from different backgrounds. They maybe go to the boot camp. They just learn how to do those technical stuff, but not necessarily the standards and all these ethics that make them the real profession. So tell us more about this problem that you see, maybe from your consulting point of view, or maybe from recent days that you see the programmers these days. What is the current state of the programmer's job? Software is a very young discipline. I want to use the word profession, but it's not a profession because there's nothing that we profess. A profession is the assemblage of standards and disciplines and ethics. The professionals profess those things. And we don't have that. But that's just because we're a young discipline. We are very young. The first line of code that executed on an electronic computer is just a little bit older than I am. Alan Turing wrote a little bit of assembly language in a machine in 1946 or 1945. That's just not that long ago. To complicate that, the need for programmers has accelerated exponentially. As the number of computers has accelerated exponentially, so has the need for programmers. So the number of programmers in the world doubles every five years. It's pretty stark. The number of programmers in the world doubles every five years or so, which means that half the programmers in the world have less than five years experience. And this will remain true as long as we are doubling every five years. And that leaves our industry in a state of perpetual inexperience. There is no way for us to accumulate the standards and the ethics because they're not taught in school and they're not taught on the job. There is no way to accumulate those things. The people who could accumulate them, the people with a lot of experience, 20 or 30 years experience in the field, barely exist. Because 20 or 30 years ago, there were hardly any programmers. So it's a fundamental problem of how do we mature an industry that is dominated by 22-year-olds? We're going to have to solve that problem because our civilization is now in a state where it depends on us for its existence. If there were not programmers now, our civilization would collapse. So we have to somehow get this idea of standards and ethics a real profession into our minds, into our brains. So that was the reason I wrote the book. I wrote the book so that I could start that process. The standards and the ethics that I talk about in that book are just my concepts. They may not be the end result. Other people should take that and massage it and change it. But at least I think it's a seed. It's some place to begin. Thanks for taking this precedent. Thanks also for sharing this history. To me, it's an insight. So I'm still considered young. I mean, my profession, I didn't know actually like 75 years ago when the first program is written and then up to now, actually the number of developers keep growing and growing exponentially. Like you said, the numbers of experienced people are not that many. Even if they are, they are just maybe in some parts of the world, their knowledge is not spread. It's just like so many people churn out from university, go into the engineering job. And that's why we are in this state of like what you say is perpetual inexperience where we try to learn from doing, right? Not necessarily from someone who has done it before, which brings us to the concept of craftsmanship. So your title of the book is Clean Craftsmanship. Maybe in the beginning, if we can clarify, what do you mean by this craftsmanship? The simplest way to describe craftsmanship is pride of workmanship. If you're a programmer, do you go home at night every day and look in the mirror and say to yourself, I did a really good job. I'm proud of the work I did today. Not only did I write software that worked, but I wrote it well. And I wrote it in a good way. The process I followed was a good process. Do you go home and feel good about yourself and good about your job? Or do you have to go home and take a shower? And far too many programmers have to go home and take a shower because they've gotten caught into this very dominant mindset that speed overrides everything. You must program fast. And they get caught in this trap of thinking that speed comes from rushing. Now, the opposite is actually true. If you rush, you will slow down. But you can't feel that because you feel the rushing. You feel the tension in your body. You feel the tension in your mind. It feels like you're going fast. You're not. You're actually going slow. And the way to go fast 
is to slow down and take your time and not make dumb mistakes and use a nice deliberate process and keep everything clean. That's the way you go fast. Very difficult concept for especially young programmers to internalize. Once you've done it for 20 years, then you realize, oh yeah, I'm going to spend eight days debugging this mess and some other guy is going to spend eight days debugging the mess I made. If I rush like a crazy person right now, maybe I should take my time and do this in a nice orderly way. And that way everybody can continue to go fast. Craftsmanship is that mindset. It is the mindset that you are working on something important and you are going to do it well. <laughs> so I just want to add this phrase. Just now you mentioned every programmer went home and then take a shower, right? For those of you who are wondering why take a shower, because in your book, you mentioned that they feel dirty because of the dirty job that they're doing with their code. So just to give a context why every programmer went home and take a shower is because of that. <laughs> 